Hi everyone, this is Lisa from Canine Clips and this is Boo. And Boo is a Yorkshire Terrier who is coming for her full groom today. She's a little shy, um, but has been uh, coming to me for several years. So I am going to show you um, how I groom her. I'm going to be using a three and three quarter inch blade on her. Um, I don't use any restraints when I groom. And uh, any dogs that I groom. And uh, I just wanted to show you that process. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. And please send me some comments if you'd like to see something different. I do things a little bit differently. Um, I uh, use scissors between the pads because I find it keeps them a little bit calmer. And I don't use any restraints as I mentioned already. <coughs> Excuse me. And I don't do any editing in my videos. So what you see is the full grooming process. I do not edit at all in any of my videos. So you are seeing the full process. Um, when I'm done with them, they are still a little bit damp. I only have them for about an hour. The owner drops them off. I start grooming them and the owner comes back an hour later and picks them up. Um, because I don't want them to be any sh more stressed out than they need to be. And that's why I do it that way. So I book by appointments. And I run this business out of my home and have been doing that for just over 16 years now. And still loving every minute of it. So I started doing these videos to... Uh, get my clients they are always asking how their dog did and I'd say oh they did really well and they wouldn't believe me because sometimes dogs act a little bit differently for the owners than they do with the groomer so uh so I started doing some videos here just to prove how good their dogs are and of course some dogs are still a little bit nervous a little bit stressed and sometimes still resistant to me helping them out and grooming so uh, i do have some of those dogs as well maybe not as well behaved here as boo here but they do give me a little bit of a challenge and i do have those videos as well oh trimmed one of her nails there so um, it's not uncommon for the nails to bleed when you trim them especially if they're a little bit overgrown because that quick um grows with the nail and then when you trim the nail it recedes but it doesn't grow as fast as the nail so that's how you're able to get those uh, nails to a healthy length is if you cut them a little more regularly when they are overgrown and that'll help get that quick back to healthy a healthy length for you I do have some videos of me uh, using scissors and clippers on the feet. So if you like to see a comparison of that. And yes, I know it does look pretty scary with me using these big old scissors here. But I have tried different techniques over the years. And have found that the, the dogs are a little bit more calmer with the scissors and I can get a cleaner cleaner finish with the scissors but every groomer is different on what they prefer so that's why I have used both methods and show you that if you're interested in trying one or the other and I do like to try doing comparisons if I can to help you um, what works best for you guys and grooming your own dogs or even starting your own grooming business as well so i do have lots of playlists but i'm also uh open to suggestions 
if you have any ideas of what you'd like to see on my channel. I really appreciate everyone's support in helping me to continue to grow and help serve my clients and not have to worry about inflation and and for that reason I don't have to put that on to my clients. I haven't raised my price in over 10 years and I really don't want to put that burden on them. They have enough to worry about. I just want to be able to help these little babies, little fur babies, look their best. So I really appreciate your support and help me to continue what I do love. Just one more left, baby. And I do try to get you the best angle as well, but sometimes these guys like to move around and I just kind of work with them what keeps them the most comfortable. So sometimes I can't get you the perfect angle, but I do try my best so that you can see the process. When I groom uh, without the camera, I actually stand right in front of them. So right now I'm kind of on an angle to them. But when I'm trimming their face and stuff, I'm standing right on. So I may look into some cameras that I can attach right to my body. I've tried that before, but I found uh, the filming was so close that it didn't give you a good perspective of how to do it. It was just right, zoomed in right on their face or, you know, so close that you couldn't really get the full perspective. So, but I can maybe look at different things. So if you guys have some suggestions, I'm always open to that as well. What you, um, if you see something on a different video that works for them, then I can maybe try contacting them to see what they use as well. To make your viewing experience a little better as well. That is my goal. To help you get what you want to see in a way you want to see it. Good girl. There we go. And so I am going to, like I said, mentioned before, trimming her with a three and three quarter inch blade. So a little bit longer. So her hair isn't too long already, so I'm just going to do the bath and everything and trim it after because there isn't too much bulk to take out right now. So I'm going to work on her face right now and the owner would like it quite short in comparison to the body um, and the bum area as well. Just because uh, she is a bit older of a dog and so her, her eyes do stain and fill up um, and block her vision a little bit. So again, I do use scissors for this um, and my scissors are rounded at the tips so they're not quite as sharp as they appear. But yes, they are long. And over the years I've gotten faster and faster. But I know that looks very scary when I'm trimming the faces of dogs. So I don't mean to scare people, but I guess just doing it for so many years, you kind of learn your comfort level and to read the dogs a lot better. So even when they are squirming, I am able to do it. And you can see that on several of my videos as well. I have some puppies and and some dogs who really don't like to be groomed. <laughs> but I'm still able to do it without any restraints and uh, usually just under an hour. So 
she does have some tearing stains there that I'm working on. Um, there's quite some close to her eye, so I'm not going to dig in there with the scissors. I'm going to wait till after she's been bathed so that I can uh, get those out. Because basically when it's moist, you kind of massage it and uh, that'll help loosen it quite a bit. So again, I'm going to trim her face up shorter. And when I do hold her as well, I do have my fingers between the head on both sides on the bone. They're just behind the jawline there. So she is able to still move, but I'm not putting any pressure on her throat to affect her breathing at all. And that still allows her movement, but gives me a little bit of control as well to hold her in place. <laughs> hold on. Have a little bit of matting here. Oh. A little thicker, a little bit of matting around her nose there. There we go. There. I'm not worried about getting it perfect right now because I still got a bath her and blow dryer and see how it dries. But uh, I do like to get that face and head done because when you do blow dry, I like to cover the ears up to protect their hearing and it's so noisy for them. And, uh, don't want to stress them out any more than I have to. So I do cover her ears to block some of the noise out. Um, but when doing that, of course, it's not going to allow me to blow dry those areas really dry. So they're going to be a little bit damp. So right now I'm just trimming all the hair right outside the ear canal. but not because uh, when I do pluck those ears, I don't want to uh, accidentally pluck that hair because it is way thicker. Thicker hair at the end, so it startled her. snapping noise. That just happens when the fur is a little thicker. <laughs> and as they have come to me for a long time, they try to learn new tricks. get out of here. All right, so I'm going to pluck your ears. So I just use some tweezers. Okay. 
So the hair and the ear comes out quite easily. But it's probably a little bit annoying feeling. But it doesn't hurt. I like to pluck a little bit at a time. Because okay. that is what that wax likes to stick to. Make sure dog's ears a little bit un itchy. Just one more, baby. There. Okay, there. So she did have, you know, quite a bit in there for just a little baby. And we are going to do the other side now. And I don't know why I always say we, because it's just me. But I guess I count the tweezers. <laughs> me and the tweezers are going to... Uh, work on this ear but I always say we for some reason so whatever I'm using at the time is uh, personalized as well it's part of the grooming I guess it's all part of the process all my tools are very important in this process <laughs> over the years I've found ones that work and ones that do not so when I do find something I like, I stick with it. And that my clients like. Because I always want the best for the dog, so I don't care about if it costs a little bit more. I just know it's the best for my dogs. All right, and then a little bit came out, so a little bit in this one, not as much as the other ear, but there we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna. I see I missed a little bit on this side. Okay. Just inside that ear as well. Yeah, good girl. I'm going to trim around her ears as well. <laughs> Where are you going? There. Okay, other side. Good girl. Okay, so now I'm going to trim her bum area up and then we'll get her into the tub. So I'm going to trim the bum area and um, just basically anywhere under undercarriage is what I call it. So anywhere that um, gets dirty from her going to the bathroom. I like to clean that up a little bit shorter, of course, because that's where stuff likes to stick to. And that's never any fun to keep her nice and clean. So I'll give her a nice clean bum here. There we go, and we're ready for the shower. All right. Okay, get you all set up there. a big fan of the bloopers of the water. So I try to do the head last. And it's best to just let it roll off the head. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hello. Hello. Okay, boo. There you go. There you go.
Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, because she has uh, thick uh, boogers, I guess. They're just tearing under her eyes. I'm just going to rub them, make sure they loosen them up, and then I'll be able to trim that out with scissors after. off here. That way I can feel if there's any extra soap residue left over. And if there is, I would do another rinse on her to get that out. Because you don't want to have any extra soap left on the dog's body because when it dries it, be, it would be very itchy for the dog. Okay, let's grab her. Come on, let's go. And we're going to go back to the table. Okay. Clean up. Okay. Just gonna get my earmuffs here. Okay, there we go. Yeah, good girl. All right, so I'm gonna give her the blow dry. Thank <laughs> you. 
see her head's a little bit damp still so after I get this uh, grooming done I'll just do a quick little uh, quick little uh, blow dry over her head I'm going to be using a three and three quarter on her now and uh, get her all cleaned up You see just a little bit under her belly that I can clean up as well. Just went back to the number of 10 blade. 
Good girl. So with the using a longer blade on a smaller dog like this, sometimes you also got to use some scissors. I just wanted to even that out there a little bit. Just uh, usually behind the legs and the armpits, and then sometimes in here as well. Um, you're not able to get close enough just because of the curves and bends, and you don't want to make sure you don't grip the the skin by accident. So. And then I also find sometimes in this uh, chest area as well. So I usually have to go in there with the scissors and just kind of kind of blend it together. And then usually right here, which I can see there. There we go. All right, good girl. So I'm just going to trim her tail up a little bit. Now with the scissors. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to come back to her face. And trim under those eyes. There's a, I don't know how close you can see there. But it is quite a bit looser. So I'm able just to trim it away. Without uh, pulling on the skin at all. There's just that one eye. The other eye seemed to have already, I was able to get underneath everything. going to trim up her muzzle a little bit more. As I said earlier, the owner would like the face a bit shorter. And if you are wanting to see something specific um, on just face trimming or ear plucking or just the nails or feet, I do um, have playlists on my channel that uh, does just that. Check those out. Of course, all without restraints. I'm just going to clean off the hair a little bit here and I'm going to give her another quick blow dryer um, but without the head scarf on. But it'll be quick just so I can get her head a little bit fluffier. Oh, I'm just going to trim right there on her nose a little bit shorter. see it kind of fluffs it up quite a bit more um, then I'm able to give it a better finished clean look and even here it kind of poofs up a little bit okay come on and we're just going to trim up her ears a little bit better
Okay, so I'm just going to go over her body once more quickly with the three and three quarters. And we'll be all done. And after the blow dry, you can just see, just brings it up a little bit. And just takes off a little bit of fur, but not very much, but then that gives it a really clean, finished look. All right, so there is Boo's groom all finished up. So I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you'll check out and uh, subscribe to my channel where you can find more videos of me grooming dogs, all without restraints, and just kind of focus in on uh, certain techniques and methods that I use to groom a dog. what I've learned, I guess, and share with you over the years. So thanks for watching. And again, thanks for all your support. And uh, please let me know if you'd like to see something different or specific. We'll see you again soon.